What's going on, everybody? My guest tonight, wellness entrepreneur Tamara Lur, has won countless global business awards and is also the author of her new book, Balance is BS, How to Have a Work-Life Blend. She's here to talk about it. Don't click away. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz What's going on, everybody? I am here joined by the beautiful Tamara Lur. Tamara, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. This is going to be fun. I am very, very excited. You guys, we've already had all of this chemistry going down before the interview, so I'm very, very excited to talk to you about your new book, which I have right here, Balance is B. I mean, sorry, Balance is BS, How to Have a Work-Life Blend. Um, first off, I want you to tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you studied, etc., yeah. etc. Well, you probably guessed the accent. It's not <laughs> from England. Um, I'm Australian, so mm. born and bred country girl, actually, oh. and always been creative. So studied fine arts at uni. I'm mm -hmm. actually a medical illustrator by trade, which is quite odd. Oh. Um, and then started a marketing agency at 19. So been in business for over 20 years. So yes, that gives away my age. <laughs> and you look beautiful. Shut thank up. you. That's sweet. <laughs> It's all the wellness products. Um, <laughs> Which we will talk about, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so living in Australia and commuting to LA, been coming here, you know, since my 20s mm -hmm. uh, and working here and selling product and, um, you know, just uh, really enjoying the scene between the two. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of me. I am married with two kids, uh, live on the beach and uh, come to LA and have lots of fun. She's got the dream life, you guys. Write a book, live a dream life, right? Um, first off, I want to know why you decided to become a writer. Well, you know what, it, it wasn't as if that was on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it was all about legacy. And what was really interesting is that through my entrepreneurial journey, as I'm growing my business mm -hmm. from, you know, there's this organization called EO, um, I was in that. Uh, and then I go, that had about 40% females. And then I get into YPO, which has an average of 45 mil turnover. Mm -hmm. And then it goes down to like under 10%. And I'm just like, what is going on? Like, this is really bad because women are really great at business. They have a magic. And I'm serious, it's magic. Well, because your brains work in a different way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, we approach things not in, in a competition, but more in a collaborative sense mm -hmm. first. And then we think about the logic afterwards. We're really great at solving people's problems. And we're, we're you know, <laughs> as you know, you, I'm sure you've heard. Um, so, yeah, so we lead with that first. And we're very head and heart, which is what why that's on the front of the, the book cover is mm -hmm. because we lead with both. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the mixture of two that makes it so magic. So I was really disappointed that there aren't as many women playing bigger games in business. So I said, look, why is that? So when I broke down that myth, what was interesting is a lot of people, you know, when they get to the point where they can really leverage their career, like after they've done their 10,000 hours, which is a book, mm -hmm. They're usually at that point where they're going, okay, I'm going to start a family. And then they say, I don't want to compromise my family. So they think they have to choose their family over the business, mm -hmm. which is a little bit insulting as well towards me because I didn't make that decision. Right. I just chose to have both mm -hmm. and be very disciplined in how I have that. So I thought, look, let's 20 years of me refining the process of blending. I said, I have to give people a new model because balance is BS. Mm -hmm. No one I know has got that sorted. So let's give them a new model. And yes. so I've refined the process. The book is very much about you know, how do you achieve that? So that that was more what it was about. It was okay. it sled with that first and then I journaled and turned that into a working, practicing book where you can actually get to that point. So it's very practical. Got it. Well, you touched on the cover art already, which I think is beautiful. Thank you. Um, and you alluded to why the book is called Balance is BS. But can you can you give us a little bit more? Why this title? Why? It's because it's very... Um, I don't want to say abrupt, but it's very in your face. Balance is BS. Yep. Why this title? Because everyone's searching for it, so someone's got to call it out. So let's call it out first and now let's look at another model that's yep. actually going to work. And the reason that balance doesn't work is when you think about it, everyone thinks of balance like a set of scales, right? You've mm -hmm. got your family here and you've got your your um, you know work here. And what we do is if we work too much, you know, we feel we need to take from here and put it back over there and balance it out. That's only two sides. What about self? Mm. Like I'm a big fan of self. Mm -hmm. you know, spend time on yourself as well as those two other things. Because then everything else flourishes, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it all starts with you. Yeah. So what's really important is to throw that myth out and let's start again and let's go, okay, let's look at work, business, well, business and work, family and self. And how do we bring those together so that we're not having to compromise anymore? Love it. Now, what was the easiest part? Well, we'll start with the easy question first. What was the easiest part about writing this book? 
I, I think it was the support. So mm. I never do anything alone. Um, it, no one gets to this size in business without a great team. I was going to say smart businesswoman never does, right? No, no, it's all about collaboration. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the first thing when, when someone said, look, you should really put this out there mm. so other people have a working model, I went straight to, okay, who can help? tell the story. So um, that was that was the easy bit was mm -hmm. really writing it because it was a journal. It's just something that I've always done. I think it's a really great practice as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, and, and for growth. And so I just went back to all my journals that I'd had and that was the start for it and then collaborated with some people who were also doing a great job at blending and then with my transformational coach who did all the exercises. So that was the easiest bit was mm -hmm. just going, okay, how do I bring everyone together so that this isn't laborious, yeah. you know? You, you mm -hmm. hear about people who lock themselves away for two years to mm -hmm. write a book. I, don't know, I ain't got two years. <laughs> well, how long did it take you to write the book? I mean, I've been working, I mean, it's 20 years of journaling, right. but um, it took about a year, just over a year to put together, okay. so which isn't isn't terrible, but it was a fun project. Yeah. You know? Now you talked about using your journals as inspiration to write the book. Um, so I'm guessing it's very personal to you. That being said, because it's so personal to you, why what what was the hardest part about writing the book? The hardest part was agreeing to put myself out there. Uh, because, you know, I was writing these on the plane, I journaled on the mm -hmm. plane and it's a 13 hour trip. So, yeah. and there's wine. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's some personal stuff in there yeah. and, and it's quite vulnerable. Um, but to put that out there and actually, you know, put myself out there to have that conversation was probably the hardest thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I have wonderful mentors. Uh, Jeff Hoffman is one of my mentors who's also mentioned in the book. He, he started Priceline and like, he's just done amazing things. And now he works with the UN. Mm -hmm. Um, which Fancy. is great. I know. Well, no, he thinks entrepreneurs are going to fix the world's problems and I agree with him. Yeah. So, and he said to me, look, it's important that somebody has this conversation and it's, it's, it's unfair for you to not to share this and start the conversation. So mm -hmm. for me, it was about the role model that I'm going to play for other women mm -hmm. and for my children. So yeah. I, yeah, I think I'm willing to put myself out there for that reason, but that is a hard thing to do. I was going to say, since that is the hardest part for you, were you worried or nervous about it not being accepted? Yes, well, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I'm fairly confident you are when you're in business, mm -hmm. um, but don't forget who the target market is. So the target market is breadwinning females, mm -hmm. you know, women who, which is now 40% of American women, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Yeah. Whole, households, you know, 40% are now breadwinners are women, yeah. which is so cool. Yeah. But we're actually doing more in the house than less, you know, than less, mm -hmm. which is absurd. So number one, so where's the balance? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's just keep loading that on, right? Yeah. Like this is ridiculous. Yeah. So, so there must be some guilt there, right? Mm -hmm. For people to feel like they have to do more. But for the first time in history, we're actually spending more time with our kids than our parents did with us and with the grandparents did with them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why we feel we need to do that. So, you know, what's really interesting is my coach said to me um, once, well, it, you know, only take note of the people who say something to you, like if you're going to put yourself out there, mm -hmm. she said, you're a one percenter. She said, don't worry about what 99% of the world thinks of you. Mm -hmm. She said, and can we have this conversation again if a one percenter has something to say? And I was like, okay, I'll never raise it again. <laughs> <laughs> we like her, bring her on the show. She's great. <laughs> I want to meet her. <laughs> um, so you said the book is designed to empower and change the mindsets of women um, in the U.S. who are the primary breadwinners in their household. Mm. What other topics do you cover in the book? Um, look, it, the book is in those three parts. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, self, um, family and work. And the other things that we do is we look at what are your values. Mm -hmm. The values is the core of everything. What you'll find is that a lot of people think because they studied accounting, they have to go on to be an accountant and God forbid they might want to open an accounting firm, right? That's the natural progression. But what you've got to realise is what I wanted in my 20s was different to what I want in my 30s and now in my 40s. The business needs to serve me and if you're working, your career needs to serve you when you get to this point. And you can afford to do that. If you're the breadwinner, you've got your stripes. Mm -hmm. You know your value right? Yeah. So there's a difference between value as in knowing what value you bring versus your value as an hourly rate or time that you have to put in the office. So we really break that down and say, okay, let's look at your core values. Let's make decisions based on that. Everyone complicates things. It really just comes down to four or five key values. And then what we're going to do is work you through some exercises so that you have a really nice blueprint of how you want to live your life. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it, we give ourselves permission to make it go away. Mm.
Now, in the book, it's it's very all-inclusive. I mean, you include women who are married, who are single, who are in same-sex relationships, mm -hmm. um, with and without children. Was that something that you that you knew from the beginning that you wanted to do, or was that something through your journaling process and through writing the book and the process of it that you decided to do? No, look, this this doesn't matter where you are in life. Mm -hmm. You might be, um, it, it actually doesn't matter at all. This mm -hmm. is all about core values, how you want to live your life and how you fulfill that. We don't want to get older and then look back and go, we have regret, mm -hmm. right? So when it comes to, you know, how your life is made up, that's just details. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, love is love. Mm -hmm. It's all inclusive. It doesn't really matter where you come from. And that's my life anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know what's really great is my daughter went to her first day at kindergarten. So she's three. And she went around and said, do you have a mummy, a mummy, a daddy, a daddy, or a mummy and a daddy? Because to her, yeah. that was the norm. Like you could have all three. So mm -hmm. what's really interesting is that it, it, it has nothing to do. Breadwinners come in all different it, all different ways mm -hmm. um and my husband stay at home dad which is really cool yeah really cool <laughs> um so it's more Good for of, him yeah Good oh god it's way harder than what i do i completely agree with you just like being a stay-at-home mom is harder than yeah i couldn't do that mm -hmm. i think <laughs> Let's see, let's know our limits, right? You're too busy running an empire, so you're okay. <laughs> yeah, but you know, at the same sense, I know what fills my bucket. So mm -hmm. one of the exercises in the book is called, uh, uh, what is your content pie? Mm -hmm. So when are you most happy? Have a look at how that looks. How much time are you spending in work, on yourself, and uh, you know, in, in your with your family? And for me, half my pie is work, and I don't apologize for it, because I love it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like I'm working most of the time. Um, <laughs> it doesn't feel like I'm working. Not tonight. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so, you know, really have a look at what it is that you love doing. And it's okay mm -hmm. if p big chunks of your pie are taken up by certain things. But then when things are off, like I remember there was a stage where one of my businesses grew so quickly and all I was doing, I was miserable. I was absolutely miserable. And my husband was like, go go talk to your coach. And my coach was like, well, let's just have a look. It's not that complicated. Like you just gave me half an hour of rant, which is what I did. <laughs> um, she said, let's have a look at the pie. And she said, well, hang on, work's such a big part of it. What are you doing in your work? And it turns out I was having to be in the office from nine to five mm. because I had built such a big team and they all needed access to me. And I was doing reports because we had investors and we had a board. And guess what my favorite thing is? Being creative. So of course, mm -hmm. board reports are not gonna serve me. No. So straight away I went, oh my gosh, this, this business now doesn't serve what I want. Mm -hmm. So I sold it, simple. Good for you. You gotta know when to get off your bus and you've gotta understand what parts of your pie, what you wanna be doing in those. So if you're in that career, you grew that ladder because you thought that's what you wanted mm -hmm. and that's what everyone expected of you is mm -hmm. to do that. And you get there and you're not happy then either pick another job, go back, or jump off. Now, you had a coach that was able to help you through that. Yeah. Say for, you know, us regular folks who don't have coaches, do you think that a woman just sitting there and having like a self-diagnosis of why she's feeling the way that she's feeling, or anybody, I say mm. woman, but anybody, um, why do you, th do you think that that's something that they should do on a daily basis? Look, I always have a coach and a mentor. That's mm -hmm. just something I always do because it really keeps me, my compass set right. Mm -hmm. um, so, look, that's the point of the book. I, do you know how much money I've spent on coaches and <laughs> mentors over my lifetime <laughs> career? I put all of that into a book so mm -hmm. that you get access to that. Mm -hmm. And if you are having trouble working through the exercises, my transformational coach, because she is as committed as I am to having more women having a blended life, mm -hmm. that she is offering her time through Facebook groups to support women in doing these exercises. And don't forget, it's not just for women. If men want more of a blend, I mean, my husband gets hit up at the um, at the school all the time by men saying, I would have loved to have done that. Yeah. They just never got asked. Yeah. So, you know. So men can read this book too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the book was released on April 9th. Mm. Where is it available? Amazon and all the typical bookstores. Awesome. You've got some great reviews on Amazon. If you guys look it up, you can just go to Amazon, Google BS, uh, Balances BS, have, How to Have a Work-Life Blend. Um, it's got great reviews on there already. It's only been out for two days. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. You must be so proud. Oh my gosh. Someone <laughs> sent that to me yesterday. Number one, new release. I'm like, wow, that's Fantastic. That's so exciting. And that just tells me that this conversation needs to be had. People are searching for an answer. That's the whole point of the book. Yes. You know, it's not about me trying to put myself out there mm -hmm. as an author or something. It's just we need more of us and let's just join this great tribe of like-minded people and 
let's go change the way it's done. I completely agree with you. It's definitely a message. And that's that's obviously being shown. It's definitely a message that needs to get out there. Now, a portion of the book sales pro proceeds go to uh, the Global Giving Initiative, mm -hmm. G1, B1G1, mm -hmm. forgive me, uh, to provide business loans to women in developing countries. Mm -hmm. And you said earlier, we had, a, we had a little chat out before this interview, you said you go into business, uh, any business um, venture that you go into has to have that. Yeah, so I have my mandate and, you know, it's always vegan, organic and cruelty free mm -hmm. because I don't, I believe that, you know, we can abolish animal testing through our buying behaviours. Yes, high five. Yeah. Yes, completely agree. Yeah, this is ridiculous, right? That yes. That's even around. Completely agree. It's even worse here. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, the, the other thing is really important is buy one, give one. So I'm studying at MIT and, and someone said to me um, at the Entrepreneur's Master's Program, said to me, the number one thing you can do as an entrepreneur is not start your own charity. It's to grow really big businesses and big products that have giving entrenched in them mm -hmm. as a cost of goods. Yeah. So then that way you're not just giving when you're profitable, you're constantly giving all the way as that business builds. So all my businesses have that built in and we give to buy one, give one because um, they have all the audited charities. So they make sure they're all compliant and they've got hundreds of charities that you can choose from. So when you buy my hair care, mm -hmm. you're helping save the orangutans. So because there's no palm oil in yeah. it. And so I thought what was fitting for this book, because obviously I didn't write it to make money. That's not the point. So <laughs> the book, all the proceeds that I get are basically going to these loans for women to start uh, their own businesses in developing countries because nine out of 10 of them pay it back. And isn't that a great transformation? Yes. Pay right? forward. It's it's fantastic. Yes. So yeah, that's the initiative. I think if we're going to impact ourselves in business and life, then let's pay that forward as well. That's amazing. You are a wonderful human being, and oh, I'm so glad to have met you. Thank you. Oh, we're hanging out. Oh, we're totally hanging out. This, but is, this, the is, end. this is a thing, you guys. Um, <laughs> where can people who are interested in seeing what you're up to, because you've got a lot of things going on. Uh, we didn't get to talk about it tonight, but we will blast it out there later. But where can fans find you? Where can they keep up to date with what you're doing? Yeah, so the social media handle is Lur Blend, so my last name, mm -hmm. L-O-E-H-R, Blend. B L E N D. And what's really cool is we're sharing an honest, like my social is no BS as well and no judgment, mm -hmm. right? We're all on there sharing what's working, what's not. It's not this, oh, look at my fantastic life. We are we are showing it all yeah. so that we can start this conversation. And, and if you follow us and, and share in and join in on that conversation, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll get there a lot faster together. Yeah. Like that's 10% is pathetic. Yeah. Let's let's get this above because women are good at business and we need more of them. Mm -hmm. And we need more women as CEOs. We need more women on boards. We need more women, you know, running stuff. Completely agree. So, um, but it's on our terms. Yeah. And it, and we will not apologise. And look, they think it looks unprofessional to bring your family to work or to go home early at three o'clock. But to me, I'm like, no, actually, I know my value. Mm -hmm. I've given my value today mm -hmm. and I will go and be with my family. So let's stop apologising for that. Damn right. Yep. Thank you so much, Mara. Pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. This is an so amazing good. interview. You guys, Balance is BS, How to Have a Work-Life Blend. Go buy it on Amazon today. It's an amazing message. It needs to get out there. And like we said, all the proceeds go to B1G1. Get out there and buy it, you guys. I am Timothy Michael. You can find me everywhere at I am Timothy Mike. Like I said, Tamara, it has been a pleasure. I'm so excited to see where your career goes. Uh, we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.